Despite containing around 3 million times less memory than contemporary cell phones, transmitting data at a rate that is about 38,000 times slower than a 5G internet connection, NASA's twin Voyager probes have remained at the forefront of space exploration for the past 45 years, providing scientists with updated insights about not just Earth, but also our solar system and beyond. But now, in a shocking twist, the Voyagers have stumbled upon an impossible discovery. What are they doing right now? What will the Voyager spacecraft encounter? Let's find out. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 wouldn't have been able to do the extraordinary things we see today if the biggest planets on our solar system hadn't lined up at the time. Because of this lucky situation, the spacecraft could use the pull of these big planets to speed up, like a hidden rope pulling them along. However, this planetary alignment only happens once every 176 years. As it turned out, NASA created two spacecraft to make the most of that once-in-a-lifetime chance. Within 15 days of one another, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, which were identical in every way, were launched in the summer of 1977. They have been operating in space for almost 45 years and send data back to Earth every day from the solar system's farthest known planets. They have lasted longer than any other spacecraft in history and have traveled further. Their journey into interstellar space is now beyond the Sun's sphere of influence and into the uncharted territory of the galaxy. They are the first objects created by humans to do so, and they will continue to hold this distinction for at least a few more decades. Overall, not a bad record, given that the Voyager missions were initially only intended to last four years. The recent impossible discovery is one of those finds scientists could never predict. We will examine it in greater detail later. The achievements of the Voyager twin probes have been nothing less than spectacular. Their early observations of Jupiter and Saturn's moons, made more than 40 years ago, astonished researchers and defied previous assumptions about these distant worlds. These moons, which astronomers once believed would be as inactive and heavily cratered as our own moon, turned out to be packed with geological activity. Voyager 2 in particular achieved several significant milestones during its journey. It became the first spacecraft to pass by Uranus in 1986, and just three years later, it conducted a flyby of Neptune. To this day, it remains the only spacecraft to have ventured on such a path. As pioneering interstellar probes more than 12 billion miles from Earth, finally, their amazing voyage is coming to an end. NASA has turned off heaters and other non-essential components during the past three years in order to stretch the spacecraft's energy reserves as far as possible to an estimated 2030. For the scientists and engineers who have been part of this extraordinary journey from its inception, the culmination of the Voyager missions is a bittersweet moment. Their dedication and hard work have seen the project through far beyond their initial expectations. The data provided by the Voyagers has provided valuable insights, fueled countless scientific discoveries, and inspired generations of researchers and space enthusiasts. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were not just ordinary spacecraft. They were meticulously designed to be stable platforms, with a rotation rate more than 15 times slower than the hour hand of a clock. This design minimized any visual blur as the spacecraft captured images and data while hurtling through space. Their impressive imaging capabilities began to astound scientists and the public even before their encounters with the outer planets. The spacecraft started transmitting images of Jupiter while still several months away from the planet. These early images, revealing the gas giant's swirling clouds and iconic Great Red Spot, delighted audiences at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. However, it was the discovery of active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon, Io, that truly set the stage for the Voyager's groundbreaking observations. Io, slightly larger than Earth's moon, turned out to be the most volcanically active body in the solar system. The spacecraft's instruments detected peculiar signals from Io, which were confirmed by the vivid images they captured. These images revealed towering volcanic plumes and a surface marked by the ejection of volcanic material. Pele, 
one of Io's most prominent volcanoes, has erupted 30 times higher than Mount Everest, covering an area nearly the size of France. The Voyager spacecraft captured over 33,000 images of Jupiter and its moons, showcasing the planet's beauty and the incredible diversity of moonscapes in the Jovian system. Before the recent impossible discovery, the twin Voyagers have been making spectacular discoveries since their launch. One of the most surprising findings was the existence of Jupiter's rings. These rings, though faint, were a revelation and added to the intrigue of the gas giant. Additionally, Voyager 2 revealed that Europa, one of Jupiter's 53 named moons, possessed an icy shell believed to be over 60 miles thick. These findings challenged previous assumptions about the nature of these distant celestial bodies and inspired further investigations into the potential habitability of icy moons. As the voyagers departed from Jupiter, they received a gravity assist that provided them with a farewell kick, propelling them towards Saturn. Without this vital boost, they would have been unable to escape the Sun's gravitational pull and venture further into space. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 soon went their separate ways, each heading towards new frontiers. Voyager 1's path took it close to Saturn's moon, Titan, which is cloaked in an orange, hazy atmosphere. This moon's mysteries piqued scientists' interest, leading to further studies of its complex chemistry. Voyager 1 then turned northward, departing from the plane of the planets, and began its journey beyond the realm of our solar system. Voyager 2, on the other hand, embarked on a series of adventures that brought it to the outermost planets of the solar system. In 1986, it made a historic flyby of Uranus, where it discovered 10 previously unknown moons, increasing the planet's moon count. Three years later, Voyager 2 reached Neptune, revealing the remarkable features of this distant ice giant. During its encounter with Neptune, Voyager 2 recorded wind speeds of up to 1,000 miles per hour, making it the fastest wind ever recorded on a planet in our solar system. As the spacecraft passed within 2,980 miles of Neptune's azure methane-rich atmosphere, it provided unprecedented insights into this distant world. Triton, Neptune's largest moon, was found to be one of the coldest places in the solar system, with surface temperatures plummeting to minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit minus 235 degrees Celsius. Triton also exhibited unique features, including ice volcanoes that ejected nitrogen gas and icy particles five miles into its thin atmosphere. These discoveries expanded our understanding of the variety and complexity of celestial bodies in our solar system, even in the outermost regions. NASA intended to turn off the cameras on both spacecraft once the grand tour was formally over. There would have been no photo opportunities after Neptune, only the unending nothingness and impossibly far-off stars. Despite the fact that the project had been extended in the hopes that the Voyagers would reach interstellar space and had been renamed the Voyager Interstellar Mission, Sagan pleaded with NASA leaders to order Voyager 1 to send one more batch of pictures. As a result, the probe pointed its camera back towards the inner solar system on Valentine's Day in 1990 and snapped 60 final pictures. Earth was grabbed by the most mesmerizing of them all, known by Sagan as the pale blue dot. At a distance of 3.8 billion miles, it is still the furthest depiction of our planet ever captured. Earth is hardly discernible in the photograph, hidden by dim sunlight that was reflected off the camera's optics. It doesn't even take up a whole pixel. So, what are they doing right now? The Voyager spacecraft is currently in a region known as interstellar space, but you should be careful not to confuse it with the edge of the solar system. Interstellar space begins where the effects of the solar wind, a constant stream of charged particles and magnetic fields from the sun, end. This solar wind creates a bubble around the sun called the heliosphere, and its expansion is blocked by the pressure from interstellar matter. The boundary where this happens is called the heliopause, marking the border between our solar system and interstellar space. As the Voyager probes were on their interstellar journey, one of the key milestones they had to navigate was the heliopause, 
It's the boundary that separates our sun's influence from the vast interstellar space beyond. The exact location of this boundary was a bit of a mystery, with various estimates and theories. Early estimations placed it as close as Jupiter, but subsequent calculations refined our understanding. In 1993, projections by astronomer Bill Gurney placed the heliopause between 116 and 177 astronomical units. To put this into perspective, one astronomical unit is roughly 93 million miles, the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Gurney's projections turned out to be remarkably accurate, as Voyager 1 reached the heliopause about 20 years later and detected the expected rise in plasma density. However, it posed a puzzling question. When Voyager 1 reached the heliopause, it observed an increase in plasma density, but no significant shift in the ambient magnetic field direction. This was unexpected, because if the spacecraft had traveled from a region where the magnetic field originated from the Sun to one where it came from other stars, a noticeable change should have occurred. Voyager 2 added to the mystery when it reached the heliopause at the same distance as its twin, 120 AU from Earth but also failed to detect any magnetic field changes. Theoretical models predicting the behavior of the heliosphere and its interaction with the interstellar environment faced challenges due to these unexpected observations. The heliosphere was expected to fluctuate in sync with the Sun's 11-year cycle, but this did not align with the data gathered by the Voyagers. The solar wind, which ebbs and flows with the Sun's cycle, was at its strongest when Voyager 2 arrived at the heliopause. The predicted position of the heliopause should have been further out than 120 AU, adding another layer of complexity. Nevertheless, the Voyager's data have provided valuable insights for refining theoretical models. Scientists now believe that our Sun has transitioned from a hot, ionized zone to a partially ionized section of our galaxy. This transition was likely triggered by nearby supernovae, ancient stars that exploded at the end of their lives and heated the surrounding areas while removing electrons from adjacent atoms. The boundaries between these regions can be likened to a seaside with turbulent waves and mixed magnetic fields. Although the degree of turbulence can vary, the Voyager's observations have revealed small-scale changes near the heliopause, but negligible variations on larger scales. The ageless explorers, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, continue their solitary journeys through interstellar space, leaving behind the planets and moons they once called home. But what lies ahead for these indefatigable travelers? It's a cosmic guessing game, but here are some possibilities to ponder. These probes are now headed in different directions, with Voyager 1 racing toward the constellation of Iucus, while Voyager 2 is making its way toward the constellation Cetus. Although it may sound like they're headed for a cosmic death in 2030, as predicted by some scientists, it's still possible that they'll likely outlast our species, enduring for millions of years. One day, they might encounter other star systems, bringing with them a message from a long-lost Earth. Picture an alien civilization stumbling upon these ancient artifacts of human ingenuity, carrying the golden record, a time capsule of our existence. Who knows what mysteries they might uncover? Thanks for watching.